I am going to be going through part of the homework problems. So if you are still having a problem setting these problems up, I am going to be going through the first six problems and helping you set these up. So I'm not going to be doing the math. I'm just going to help you set it up. I will do the very first one with you. And then I want you to try the rest on your own. I'll help you set them up and you need to do the math on your own. However, if you need more help, let me know and I would love to meet with you. So Captain's Lawn Service can mow eight lawns in five hours. So we know eight lawns in five hours. So I'm going to put lawns on the top and hours on the bottom. So we can do eight lawns in five hours. And now the question asks, if they continue at the same rate, how long does it take for the service to mow 12 lawns? So lawns is at the top, so 12 needs to go on the top, and I'm looking for the hours. Now I'm noticing eight does not go into 12 evenly. So there are several things I can do. I can take 12 and divide it by eight, and then do the same thing to five. However, I like to use that proportion strategy and move everything around. So the problem I'm actually going to do is going to say H equals, let me fix that H there, H equals 12 times five. So I'm going to times these diagonal numbers, and then we're going to divide by this other remaining number. And that means I did everything the opposite. So the opposite of divide by five is two times by five. So I did that over here. And then the opposite, because this became H times, because I had to divide, the opposite of divide is time. So I moved the five to the side, the H to the side. And now I want to get H alone. And so I, or I divide, the opposite of times is divide by eight. So I can do 12 times five divided by eight. So 12 times five is 60, and then 60 divided by eight is going to give me a decimal number. So I already know eight cannot go into 60. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that decimal there. So eight can't go into six, but it can go into 67 times, which is 56. Leftover is four, bring down the zero. Eight goes into 40 exactly five times, and then we wanna bring this decimal straight up. So after, for him to mow 12 lawns, that took seven and a half hours. Okay, so let's try this next one here. So I'm gonna set it up, and then you're going to finish the math here. So density is measured in units of mass per units of volume. So in science, we've been talking about density. So this is perfect, right? So we're seeing how much it can hold and how much mass is in there, how much matter is inside of that space. And the more it's packed in there, the more dense it is. And the less it's packed in there, the less dense it is. So it can be thought of as a unit rate. The mass of a block of aluminum is 9.45 grams, and the volume is 3.5 cubic centimeters. What is the density of aluminum? So I'm going to put my grams on the top and my volume on the bottom. So here's how much matter it has is 9.45. So 9.45. And we're dividing by 3.5. And really what we're trying to find here is its unit rate. How much is in one cubic centimeter? So how much is in one little square? And that will help us know the density of it. So we're trying to find one here. So this one is pretty easy. I can go from 3.5 to one by dividing by 3.5. So now I need to do the same thing here, 9.45 divided by 3.5. So remember we need to move this decimal, which means move this decimal. So the decimal is going to go right up between the four and the five. 
So I'll let you do the math to figure out this top number here. So be sure to move your decimals and divide. Hey, a three pack of light bulbs costs $3.45. A four pack of the same light bulbs costs $4.20. Which pack has a better value? So I want to know the price of one light bulb. So I have my money and we are going to divide it by the light bulbs to see how much one light bulb costs. So I set up this first one for you. So I'll let you set up the second one and do the math here to see which one has a better value, which one is going to be cheaper per light bulb. Hey, number four says it takes Tyreek 28 minutes to bike to his school, which is seven miles away. So 28 minutes for seven miles. If he continues to pedal at this pace, how long would it take for him to get to a soccer field, which is 8.8 .8 miles away from his school? So we here we have, we know it takes 28 minutes to go seven miles. So I'm going to put my minutes on the top every time and my miles on the bottom. So now I want to know how long, that's minutes, so how many minutes is it going to take for him to get to a soccer field, which is 8.8 .8 miles away. So 8.8. .8. So there's lots of ways we can do this problem here. I can find the unit rate, which is pretty easy, and then finish the problem here. Or I can use that proportion strategy and I can multiply here and then divide by seven to find M. So I can either find out how long it takes for one mile and multiply that, or I can multiply here and divide here. Either way, you should get the same answer here. So go ahead and try that one out. So one thing, actually, I'm going to come back here. I do know that they're going more miles, so my minutes should also be more than 28. So that's a good way to check. Were you getting bigger or smaller? Did you follow that same pattern? Hey, Mario, Mario, Maria and Franco are draining water troughs on their farm. Maria's trough drained 60 gallons of water in 75 minutes and Franco's trough drained 75 gallons in an hour. So one thing I noticed is this talked about minutes and this talked about an hour. We need to have them be the same. So I'm gonna change them both to minutes. And I know that there's 60 minutes in an hour. So who's drained faster? So I want to know how much it drained each minute. So I know Maria's did 60, so this is how much it drained per 75 minutes. And then Franco's drained 75 gallons in 60 minutes. So there's our proportions. So we need to see who's drained faster. So I'll let you work on that one. Hey, number six, the last one I'm going to help you set up today, but if you need more help, be sure to let me know. So we know they can go three feet in four minutes. So maybe this is a sloth here. Every time they go three feet, it took four minutes. So we want to find the unit rate of how many feet per each minute. So if I do that, I put my feet on the top and I'm dividing by the minutes. So every minute, so I want to know how long it took for one minute, which is actually three, they can go three fourths of a foot in one minute here. So that's our unit rate here. So every time it takes them three-fourths of a foot in one minute. So if I added up three-fourths times four, that would equal three holes. 
So now we're going to use this unit rate to find an equivalent rate. Enter the correct answer in the box. So I know that they can go three-fourths of a foot each minute. And I want to know how long they can go in 16 minutes. So they're doing this 16 times three-fourths here. So we're going to go ahead and multiply these out. And that will tell us how far they go in 12 minutes there. Okay, so go ahead and try the rest of those on your own. So set it up. Think about this is what I have. This is what I'm dividing by to find the unit. Then use that unit to repeat and multiply to find if they do it in, for this long or if they do it for that long or if they have this many, how many that would be. Hey, let me know if I can help you anymore.